Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for this virtual talk in support of Makers and Mentors, The Art and Life of Snow Farm, the New England Craft School. I'm Sage Brousseau, Director of Education at Fuller Craft Museum in Brockton, Massachusetts. Our mission at Fuller Craft is to provide meaningful discovery of contemporary craft through exhibitions, collections, education, and public programs. And we're committed to challenging perceptions and building appreciation of the material world. Our purpose is to inspire, stimulate, and enrich an ever-expanding community. To learn more about our collection, exhibitions, other upcoming virtual events, or becoming a member, please visit us at fullercraft.org. Tonight, joining me are three artists from the exhibition, Snow Farm Makers and Mentors, Suna Bonametti, Graham Deckers, and Christine Keneally, all of whom have been and continue to be a part of the Snow Farm community. We're going to look at some of their artwork. We're going to have a chat for about 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to save some time towards the end for some Q&A. So please enter your questions into the Q&A function um, on your uh, dashboard down below. Um, we'll, be met, we'll be moderating the questions um, and um, posing those questions to them at the end. So you can enter them at any time when they come to you and, and we'll try and get to all the questions we can. Um, Snow Farm, if you're not familiar, is a nonprofit residential school, craft school in Williamsburg, Massachusetts, located at the foothills of the Berkshire Mountains. Love that area. Western Mass is super inspirational and we're going to learn a lot about Snow Farm and what these artists have really gained from being a part of this really special community. I am going to share my screen in just a second and we're going to be introduced to tonight's guests. Um, hello, my name is Suna. I am a jewelry designer currently living in New York City, but I grew up in Italy. And the way I'm connected to Snow Farm is I went to Snow Farm as a teenager. Um, I, when traveling to visit family here, I, I decided to attend the school and I, and I proceeded to go back four times in a row. Um, and, and then I went to school, actually became a, I learned about jewelry while I was at Snow Farm and I became super passionate about it and decided to pursue it as my studies and, and it ended up being my career. So I'm actually like still doing that currently in my life, thanks to Snow Farm. Um, Great, thanks. All right, next I'm gonna introduce you to Christine Keneally. Hi, I'm Christine and um, my I actually grew up just a couple miles away from Snow Farm, but didn't, know about it until after I was out of high school, sadly. Otherwise, I would have loved to be in the high school program. But I um, became interested or I, I be joined the Snow Farm community after already being a mosaic artist for a few years. And I um, directed the high school program for a few years while I was there, um, working full time and also um, hiring instructors and recruiting students for the program and I've done kind of all the jobs at Snow Farm like I you know worked in the kitchen a few times a few shifts when it was needed and helped rearrange furniture and set up for the second sale and I was on the board of directors for two years as well so I've got a lot of different angles of knowing and loving the place it's become a very deep part of my life awesome thanks Christine and last but not least Graham Deckers Please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Graham Deckers. Um, I went to Snow Farm for three years. Um, I went like the first year and my parents had gotten this, uh, had entered me into this program as a present. And then I loved it so much that I went back three more years. But um, now I'm, I did that during high school and now I'm a, a college student at Rhode Island School of Design and uh, Snow Farm definitely um, has like kind of set me on this path to be an artist and pursue this um, area, so. Awesome, thank you all for um, being a part of this um, exhibition. First of all, it's wonderful to have your work um, 
in the museum um, and to be sharing it a little bit tonight um, uh, with everyone um, far and wide. And also thank you for joining us tonight to talk a little bit about um, your work, your path in, as an artist and, and kind of how, um, you know, Snow Farm has influenced your path, how it's um, helped you explore your media, your passion for um, art and craft. Um, and um, a lot, and I'm really interested to get more uh, information, learn more information about the, the sense of community. That's um, what we seem to really, um, everyone, and that seems to be the core of Snow Farm. So Christine is actually going to um, kind of start off the night with our questions. She's gonna be sort of our moderator this evening. You all have um, sort of a different relationship, um, but similar similarities with Snow Farm and, um, Christine, how do you want to kick this off? Well, um, maybe we can each talk about the other work that we have in the slideshow here, and we can um, give the audience a little bit of a sense of um, who we are artistically even more. My work is very inspired by um, nature and my relationship with nature. And um, I think there's been a big evolution of my use of different materials through uh, through the expansion of my knowledge of materials that I've gotten through Snow Farm because it's such a multimedia uh, wonderland, really. I mean, on any given workshop week or weekend, you can walk around to the different studios and see amazing things happening in so so many different media, and. Um, so I've been exposed to, you know, initially my, my work was a lot more one dimensional. And then through my, um, you know, my exposure to, you know, glass and ceramics and um, metal, it, it became a lot more alive with different materials. Um, and I never would have thought that I would make jewelry, but, um, I became really excited by the idea of, of wearable art through classes I'd seen offered at Snow Farm where it's um, another whole, it's another whole world beyond the art you hang on a wall. Um, so I would say um, that the biggest thing that I do in mosaics is um, installation work. Um, and this is, this is the work that I feel um, can really change a space um, and create, create an ambiance um, in a sort of permanent way. Um, and so work that, you know, is fairly painterly and imagine, you know, it inspires the imagination, um, but also that people can interact with in a fun, in a fun way. Um, and these are some examples of my installation work. Um, yeah, uh, so my work is uh, mostly um, about uh, my own sense of uh, masculinity or um, masculinity in general or toxic forms, forms of masculinity and how it relates to queer identity. Um, I did this uh, painting series in uh, high school and I had started creating the ideas and concepts for it at Snow Farm. And I was able to stay in touch with a couple of my mentors at Snow Farm to get feedback on this. But um, it was really about um, how I grew up and um, how I interacted with masculinity. I went to an all boys boarding school in uh, Avon, Connecticut. And uh, that had a big impact on uh, how I saw my own identity and the struggles of like, uh, reaching acceptance and um, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, symbolism within uh, like glitter and then the colors and uh, kind of like referencing queer identity. Um, but then there's also um, subtle hints of more like masculine uh, symbols or motifs like uh, like arm hair or um, aggression. Um, and I really kind of wanted to study um, uh, how uh, masculinity kind of has this uh, glorification of pain in a sh kind of like shielded by this idea of toughness. 
Um, and so this is what my uh, painting has mostly been about. And then um, my jewelry, I also love doing jewelry as well. And it's one of the other big loves and passions of my life. And I actually um, developed this love at a snow farm. Um, I remember my first, first year um, with uh, Kathy Jastrzewinski. And then later on, uh, Suna became uh, one of my teachers and mentors as well. And actually the image you see on the right, the uh, guillotine ring is actually, uh, I made during snow farm. Uh, with Suna, so, um, but yes, same thing. I'm, I'm kind of uh, exploring like these uh, ideas of like masculinity and aggression or tension even. Um, and uh, then again, you see the hair kind of show up in my work again. Uh, that's actually my own hair that I cut off, fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, Suna. So I um, have been pursuing this career in jewelry. So some of the work in the slides um, is work that I started making when I moved to New York eight years ago. Um, so the collection on the right, the picture on the right is part of my core like production line um, that you can find on my website, which is my name. And, um, and actually, and the rings on the left are part of a small collection of slice of rings. So basically, I mean, I have a tremendous interest in, in construction and how work comes together and the small detail. So all of these pieces of work, um, I, I had a fascination for architecture since I was a kid and I ended up deciding to pursue the jewelry career but in some ways, all of the jewelry sort of uh, takes from architectural uh, inspiration and forms and, and engineering. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you can see the lines and you can see the forms and the way the pieces come together. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's other slides. Did I put other slides? Yeah. And then over the last few years, I've also been working on furniture more. So there's a two, the two slides, the two pictures on the right are, um, are collaborations that I did, to the two lamps um, and the table. And then the far left one is a bench. It's full size, like it's the tree is the size of a human um, and you can sit on it. And that was a project that I did for Design Week in New York like two years ago at this point. Um, so I've been slowly and gently like easing my way into the furniture world. And, and ultimately, I mean, in a lot of ways they're just large sculptures, um, but, but in the form of functional objects. Um, so, so yeah, so that's another new passion and found interest of mine that I've been pursuing recently. Very cool, cool. All right, so let's start to get to know a little bit more about you as artists and, and this um, path that has, you've all woven through Snow Farm at some point or another, and let's, let's learn a little bit more about that. The common thread specifically between the three of us is the high school program at Snow Farm. Um, and there's other programs there, but I think that's our kind of common ground here. And, you know, high school is obviously a very formative time. Um, and, my experience directing the program is just so um, joyfully wit witnessing young people kind of finding themselves in such an amazing deep way or you know getting to know something about themselves through what they learned there and through who they met there and who they met like you know who who you meet at snow farm is I think as important as, you know, maybe any nuts and bolts of what you learn, at least at that age, I think. Um, and since I wasn't, you know, at Snow Farm at that age, I can't say that specifically, but I know that um, what, I, what I witnessed was real um, in students and the connection with the faculty, which who are often, you know, people in their master's degrees or in their, you know, in their 20s who are really identified with the students. Um, so my, I guess my 
question that we can each answer is what does what does mentorship in art mean to you? Um, well, for me, it was I, so when I went as a student, I I remember there there were these two teachers that um, I was just sort of like a kid and having a good time and just sort of making things. And two of the teachers brought me aside and were like, "You're good, like <laughs> work on it, like keep on it." And it really struck me, and it's something that I think about every once in a while, because when they said it to me, I had no clue what they were talking about. Um, and, and they really guided me. And, and ultimately, like, one of the reasons why it, I was inspired to keep on studying this was not only what they said to me, what, but it was like their passion was transpiring in the way that they were teaching me. Mm. And so they're their love for the craft and their love for this kind of lifestyle um, of like pursuing a craft um, and you know and the lifestyle that goes along with that because obviously it's a very particular one um, is ultimately what guided me in my decisions and and sort of helped me to decide that I would be you know ultimately brought me to where I am right now mm. um, so it was very important and, and I hope that in some ways, like I was in, in that way, inspiring to Graham because he was <laughs> in <his> mind. <laughs> yes, very much so. Yeah, I, I had an amazing time at Snow Farm. I was kind of also like, in the beginning, I was also very much like the kid, like I'm just having a fun time. And then um, actually it was uh, the year that uh, you were there with uh, Kathy that um, really kind of transformed uh, my perception on like what being an artist meant. And so um, I really had never thought uh, much like conceptually about my art before. And then I remember uh, you two uh, like had a discussion with me because you had known that I had the, the skills because I had been on the program in previous years and you knew that I could um, create, but um, you really like pushed me conceptually and start like started to make me think about my art and like why I was making and the reasons that like, like, what is this, what's the importance of what I'm making and how is it affecting me? And that's like really like hit home with me for the past couple of years. I've been really trying to think about like where I see my art and how it affects the world around. So. Yeah. And in some ways, Christine, like you were, I think I was at the program one year that you directed it. And then like a couple years later, I came back to teach and I mm -hmm. was one of the teachers while you directed. Um, so I got like both sides, um, which was really cool. And, and I mean, I think that you also had a huge, uh, like you had a really great way of directing the program. Like you were very open and loving and like flexible. Um, and in some ways that was also like, that is also a tremendous mentorship for us teachers and like the way that we could sort of, um, you know, re, you know, educate these kids and, and like make them passionate about the same things that we were passionate about. Hmm. So that was, that's also like a cool connection. I love that the three of us are here in this chat, even though like Graham, I've never even met you before, but there's like, it's like a, a lineage almost that- yeah. I think we had like a passing um, thing. I think you went, you came for the uh, middle part of a section and I did, unfortunately, your section uh, for oh, um, mosaics yeah. ran out before I could sign up for it. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. All <laughs> I right. remember it was a popular one, that's so why. So we did talk about that, yeah. Yes. Um, I, I think that there's sort of, it's sort of legendary, you know, like when you, um, I wish, I wish Stan could be here because he was, um, a director of the program for many years and he was sort of my mentor in becoming the director. Um, the first year I was, I was on staff, he was a director and I was the assistant director and he, I was there. I think that was one of the first years I taught. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. And um, he's just, he, he holds like the history of Snow Farm in his, in his blood. It's kind of like everywhere he goes, he's always telling stories about the history, his history there and all these people that, that made it so alive at certain times. And, and 
um, you just feel that you can't be in that space without it becoming a part of you because of that. Um, and almost a responsibility to like, you know, carry that on so that other people can experience it too. Keeping the character and the, the culture of it, you know, alive. Um, so I think it was because of him that I got such a, I don't know, everybody in the program kind of became family. It felt like, you know, we all really um, wanted each other to have the best experience and wanted to keep in touch. Um, so uh, yeah, and I, I guess the other thing I would say is that um, my, my role as a director was to kind of foster a good environment for everybody, but I also got to really witness some incredible art happening um, because, uh, you know, I'd get to walk around to different studios and see what people were making and just, you know, see the process of it. And I'd get to, we all got to see the, each of the instructors give a slideshow presentation to the whole group of their work. And I think there's something, I didn't have a formal um, art education. Um, I grew up, I was raised by an artist. My mother's an artist and she was a, uh, she's a re now retired art teacher. So, but she taught um, first, second and third grade. So very different, um, very different way of talking about art at that level. But I felt like the way people, the way the faculty talked about their work in the slideshow was so formative for me because it was almost like they were challenging me to say, oh, okay, well, why, why do I, or to think about to myself about why do I make what I make mm -hmm. as they were showing their work and talking about it um, in that way. And it got me to think um, about that as part of the making process. You know, why, if I'm gonna make something, why am I gonna make it? And what would I say about it to a group of people? Um, and over the years, I watched so many different slideshow presentations that some were like really inspiring and others were like, okay, well, that person makes me think, makes me, makes me want to know more about that. Soon, my follow-up question for you then is, and you sort of touched on this a little bit, but it was only a couple of years in between you being a student in the program and then you coming back as an instructor. And how do you think your relationship as an, as a student, um, affected your or your time as a student affected your relationships with your own students I went to school in Italy so I graduated high school a year later I think than everybody else so one year went by without me going to snow farm and then I went to call university and the year, the year after so I was like 20 when I went to teach yeah um and it was odd because I had just you know I was just like three years older than most of the people that were there or like some of the students that were there um and very little experience but I was uh you know I'd already I'd learned so much while I was at Snow Farm so I put it like the first years I remember putting in act a lot of what I learned there back into the lessons that I was teaching but it was I mean it, it definitely was something that I was I was telling everybody that I my history and so the fact that I had been a student there and I was pursuing this career like ultimately meant that they could do the same um and was and was trying to inspire as many people as I as I could um in the same way that I had been inspired there so yeah I mean it it was it was interesting being like only ever so slightly out of the out of high school before I even went back to teach but it was it was it, it was very informative for me as well because it sort of helped me gain more knowledge of what I was doing because when you have to teach something it forces you to really know it mm -hmm. so well in order to explain it in ways that people can ex can understand um I hope I did a good job um <laughs> clearly <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was great. It was, 
I think the fact that I was so young also probably helped that I didn't, I wasn't intimidating to people. Mm -hmm. so I think a lot of the, in my first years, especially like a lot of the students could probably feel comfortable with me um, because I was only just ever so slightly older than them. The first time, so Graham, maybe, maybe you can answer this one. The first time you were getting ready to go to Snow Farm, did you have like uh, hopes or expectations that you would, that you would get out of it? And, and did you end up, did it end up, you know, meeting your expectations or did something else happen instead? Um, yeah, I definitely, I went in with a completely different uh, mindset. I had uh, just completed um, my freshman year at uh, this uh, art high school and it hadn't worked out um, very well for me. And I, and I was kind of like about to like put the coat on the hanger and kind of like say, maybe this will be like a hobby type of thing. And then I, um, I still like loved art. And so I, I wanted to go to this program and have like a great time. And then I found myself like at like the summer program at Snow Farm, I was like thinking like, wh like, why did I, why am I like giving up? Like, this is so fun. This is like what I'd love to do. And then I also saw, um, different pe uh, different like uh, teachers and even like students like making like their life around art and I was like so inspired and it really like made me change how I thought about where art um, played a role in my life and um, yeah I ended up going to a, a different high school with a, a really really amazing uh, program uh, led by um, uh, a lady called Christina Pinton, who actually went to Snow Farm as well. It was a big coincidence uh, that that happened because I didn't know until I had gone that summer. But um, then that also, like, that connection there, like, also kind of sparked a flame underneath me to um, kind of, like, get back in the studio and start making things, even if it was just, like, a sophomore in high school, you know? But it's still that I still like think about that and that was like the most influential year or summer of like my life because it really like changed the outcome of how I saw myself with art. And now you're going to college for art is that right? Yeah I'm going to uh, Rhode Island School of Design so mm -hmm. like conservatory like <laughs> art all the way type of deal so. It's very awesome. What's it like to be out in the world and unexpectedly meet somebody who also has the Snow Farm connection? It's like you instantly become friends, right? <laughs> it is so crazy. I've had so many encounters like that. Um, my art teacher in high school was one of them, but um, I also uh, bumped into uh, Spencer, one of the glass blowing teachers one time, just like out in Boston in the middle of nowhere. And I got to like see his studio and see him work a little bit. And it was just, like this crazy connection. And then also I uh, actually just a couple of days ago um, was working with a ceramicist um, named Ariana. I'm forgetting her last name now, but um, mm. she let me um, fire some work that I had been doing for a sculpture class in her studio. And we connected over Snow Farm because she actually went and the whole connection that uh, we had was actually she was wearing a pair of earrings that you had made, Suna. Oh, and, I, yeah. Yeah. She, she just bought, or someone just bought them for her. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, no and way. so I like, uh, we connected over that and it's just like crazy how many like connections you Rhode get from Snow Farm. What was that? She's in Rhode Island. No, she's in uh, Connecticut. She works at um, uh, Miss Porter's uh, School for Girls in uh, Farmington, Connecticut. And then that's how I met her, was because I went to um, a school just close by. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So it's like, yeah, I know. It's crazy how like small the world is, and especially like the snow farm community. Like yeah. you end up just like meeting people with like similar experiences. And yeah. then like, I, yeah. had a story. I had a similar story last year. I went to an opening and I was with Bryce, who Christine, you know, who is the mm -hmm. person I taught with. I taught with him for three years. And all of a sudden he calls me over. Um, it was a design show, a furniture show. 
and he's like, I want to introduce you to someone. And I see this like tall, handsome man and I'm looking at him and I'm like, I feel like I've seen this guy. And he was one of my students, like he was one of my Snow Farm students, like wow. years ago. And he was some, one of the students that I like knew was going to do good. And mm -hmm. he graduated or like he finished Snow Farm, went to, went to university and then moved to New York City and started working for a designer. And is now like part of the same community that I'm from. Like I've seen him out and out um, at openings and events and stuff. And it's crazy. Cause like he was <laughs> old um, <laughs> when I was here. And now he's like an adult in the New York City design scene. Um, just like doing his thing. And you played a role in that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like that's the crazy part is that he, yeah, I mean, he, he made work and I mean, he was definitely one of the kids as well that I was like, you're good, like focus on this. Um, and yeah, and it was, it was just amazing. It, it made me feel old. Cause I was like, wow, like I'm running into people that I taught with, that I taught to in this world that I'm in. Like it's, these are my people. Like these are the people that I, my peers and yet like students that I taught with are now my peers. Mm -hmm. um, I have some connections on Facebook with um, students who, you know, were in the program when I was in charge and see, you know, I see them, um, you know, sharing their accomplishments. And I, I, I just feel a sense of pride, like just so happy for them that, you know, knowing, um, just having the opportunity to know them on a part of their journey through that. It's really sweet. I guess formative things for me about uh, my involvement at Snow Farm is that I got to take classes in other mediums other than my own. Um, and it, you know, I've, I've always been like interested in multimedia and I've always been a maker, but I feel like Snow Farm was like um, a place where I, it's, it's a place where I can like learn a different medium from an expert in that medium and not only we learn the nuts and bolts of, of techniques but of what the what the meaning of that is and what the the context of it is and um I, you know I got to do some work in ceramics some collage I, I got over my fear of welding and learned how to do that and that was big um and uh, encaustic painting, like, you know, I'd never even heard of that before. And all of those mediums somehow in some, in some small way have kind of made, made an appearance in my mosaic work, um, <coughs> which I hadn't really expected, but, um, I think it broadened my sense of what craft really is. Um, and I see that that's kind of become the case for you, Suno, with your sort of branching over into, you know, yeah. furniture design too. I mean, um, for sure. I think even just having the access, like when you're there and yeah. being able to walk through the studios and see what is happening, um, just widens your horizons in some ways because you learn how to make a glass. Like you learn how a glass is made, whether you see it or not, like yeah. just watching the process watching the sport of glass blowing in some ways. Um, same goes for like, even just the drawing classes or the flame working or the mosaics, like mm -hmm. all of these things. I think all these years that I've spent at Snow Farm between being a student and going back and teaching over during the high school program and during the adult classes has definitely like showed me that there are so many other techniques that if I haven't, you know, whether I tried them or not while I was there, I know that they exist now thanks to the time that I've spent there. Yeah. Um, which has been an invaluable, um, just sort of tool to put in my toolbox because I, you know, it's just, I know it's there. So like I've seen marble, like marbling for instance is something I've been dying to do. And, um, I've seen, I've never tried it, but I know how it works because I saw it being done there. So like, mm -hmm. I could definitely uh, like sort of put it together. Um, yeah, and the furniture, I mean, I, I've done a little bit of glass while I'm here in New York, which I haven't incorporated in my work yet, but that I all learned while I was at Snow Farm. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, totally incredible. Like it's such an incredible opportunity to have access to all these classes and see them, even if you're not attending them while you're at the snow farm, just being able to spend time around people that are doing it, and like have meals and discuss with them what they're working on. So it really is like an art boot camp if you think about it. It's like very much like you're there for like this period of time. And within that period of time, you are given like a full rundown of like three different mediums of your choice. And then um, at the end, you kind of get to see like the fruits of your labor and see everybody else's stuff in the studio tours. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy to see how everybody like builds a whole new skill set or three whole new skill sets within such a short period of time. It's like, it's like amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes me think of something um, that a student, I think this was in an adult program. This lady was there taking, um, I think a weaving class or something. And she happened to watch a glass blowing demonstration. Can't remember what happened. She watched a glass blowing demonstration and afterwards she said, wow, I can't believe you could make that in 15 minutes. Um, to the artist and he said well it took me 15 years plus 15 minutes yeah and um and that's just like you know it's it's how craft is like you yeah. affect it over time and seeing being around people who um make that their labor of love is so inspiring you know it's it's like who you know you can't really expect that you would learn something and then become amazing at it in a couple of days. And I think a lot of us have, you know, a lot of people in the modern world, like, you know, they expect things to like come to them easily um, yeah. or they get frustrated if it's not as easy as the, as the teacher makes it look. And so, you know, I think that that that's like the, the famous line of a crafts person is, yeah, yeah. this took 15 years plus 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I want to jump in real quick um, and hear a little bit more about, um, now that we really kind of know who you all are as artists, it's really kind of fascinating and learning all these details about um, your path and your path through Snow Farm and back again. Um, I wanna know a little bit more about the objects that um, I'm gonna pull them up again that we that we have in the show. Um, so we're gonna start with you, Suna, again. Um, can you share a little bit about these objects and tell us about, um, tell us about them? I began the process of making them while I was actually at an art residency at another similar program called um, Haystack. And I, it was, when I arrived, I had a fever and was sick. And so I, I had all these plans to go into the metal shop and all these different, the ceramic shop, but I was sick. And so I, all I could do was just like sit at my computer or, or at the computers, they have a fab lab. And so I spent, a lot of time uh, 3D, designing in 3D with CAD and came up with these pieces. And there was a team of people that worked these 3D printers that they have um, at Haystack called Form, Form Lab. And I printed them there. So these are 3D printed uh, and then cast in brass. And, and the reason that the particularity about these objects is that I was very interested in creating something that would be virtually impossible to make by hand. So obviously like you could make these by hand, but they would be tremendously difficult. Um, so the, the beauty of the of CAD and designing in 3D is that you can make these very complex forms that really like only nature knows how to make from scratch. Um, and so I, I drew them and I, I really liked all the lines, like all the, the volumes of the spaces inter, interfering and, and interacting and these lines coming together. And obviously it's a, it's a shame people can't see them up close, but there's like so much detail to all of them. Um, and I was just very fascinated by all the different curves joining together. And um, so actually I made the forms and then I, I attached handles to them. And the first one was the single and it's a swishing spoon. So you, it's meant to be used when you're making like hot soup. So you can taste the soup and like swish it in your spoon so it cools off. Um, <laughs> and it sort of like took off and became all these like intersecting shapes. Um, 
but yeah, that's, that's my piece. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, Oh, Christine, yay. Um, I wanted to ask you about mosaics because what what is it about mosaics that draws you? Because it sounds like you've definitely um, explored a lot of different media and, and how did um, mosaics kind of call you? Well, it called me initially because I, um, I was really like drawn in by the, the texture and um, the sort of, uneven nature of it and the the reflectivity of it um you know working with some you know with mixed materials that some are shining some are not and different thicknesses and the patterns um but i think the symbolism for me uh that always that i always feel as i'm making work is the um the sort of healing nature of creating something creating one cohesive image out of all these tiny little pieces Mm. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I think it really lends itself to letting work evolve and being really in the moment with it. Um, and the importance of kind of the individual parts of a whole. And I think for me, there's been a lot of like personal and spiritual exploration with sort of the oneness of all of us and mosaics really kind of um, embodies that, you know, each piece is important, um, but it relies on all the other pieces around it too, to form a design, just as we all do. Um, and so, you know, the, the work that I have in the show is about my relationship with nature and how nature has kind of, you know, the, the natural world has become my spirituality um, mm -hmm. and has healed me in many different ways. So the piece on the left is called uh, Wild Woman. Um, and I made this um, while I was studying um, with an herbalist. And um, she be became really a mentor for me too in how I um, think about plants um, and my relationship with plants. And um, the piece on the right is called Staying in the Miracle. And this one I think is even more personal. Um, it's really about kind of holding hope alive and, and, and believing in miracles. And um, specifically this was um, created during a time when I was trying to have a baby and it took a really long time to get there, but I had to kind of hold hope that, you know, that miracles happen. And um, so looking at this always makes me think about how glad I am that I didn't give up because now I have a one and a half year old daughter. <laughs> uh, and Graham, so Graham, I, I can tell that a lot of your work is very, um, you know, self-portrait based. Um, and I, I would like to know a little bit more about this piece and um, what media, is it um, acrylic or oil? Um, it's oil paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of my pieces are, well, especially with this series that I've made, um, it's, uh, a lot of self-portrait based because it's it's more of a personal exploration of my own identity and within masculinity. Um, but this piece in particular, it's called um, Guilty for My Actions. And it's, uh, it portrays me and my brother. And uh, my brother and I had um, a very rough uh, relationship for a, for a very long time. It was only like recently where we've kind of like rekindled our relationship, but, um, a lot of it was uh, to do with um, the the school that we both went to. We both went to the same all boys boarding school, and um, the the button down shirts are kind of uh, symbolic of that. They're like subtle nods to things in my own life that maybe other people wouldn't get. But uh, there was like a dress code, and so we both had these button down shirts and whatnot, and we both had these like different interactions and experiences at this school. And I, I found a lot of our aggression was um, kind of started by that um, difference in um, experience. I think there was a lack of understanding. And uh, there's actually like a, it's, it's a funny story now, but uh, when uh, I was younger, my brother and I had gotten into like so many like 
fights and like brawls. And uh, one of like the most notorious ones was when I actually threw a fork at him and it actually, he had to, he has a scar of where it hit now. And it's kind of like uh, one of the most iconic like fights that we've had. And, but in many ways, like he, he kind of like helped me like without me knowing it, he really helped me gain an understanding of who I was and what um, my own masculinity meant to me and what like the difference was between like my identity and then like my masculinity and then toxic forms of masculinity. Um, and yeah, this was kind of uh, a piece to kind of um, almost say, I'm, I'm sorry, there's like this uh, tension between us, um, but then there's like this rope that I'm holding back now, it's kind of, and then also the, um, the gray tones in a lot of my uh, paintings are about suppression of color and um, suppression of like um, joy and like diversity. And so um, at that stage, um, I had kind of, uh, suppress these ideas of uh, how, like I, I was unable to see through my brother's eyes. And so I suppressed his image almost. So, yeah. so. I'm curious, Graham, a little bit about, since you're sort of representing the artist who's um, sort of at the, the beginning stages of their career as an artist and, and, and you're definitely exploring lots of media. So um, we have painting in the show and that you've also worked in, um, metals and jewelry and, and how do you think that being having the opportunity to explore those different media at Snow Farm sort of has influenced you or do you think that you would have found certain media if you hadn't um, had that opportunity to work in it? Um, I definitely was uh, always in uh, I was always interested in painting and it was something that I would always done and um, going to Snow Farm I was like introduced to so many different uh, mediums that um, had were like untapped to, uh, sources of like creativity for me. And so um, I'm, <laughs> Snow Farm almost made it a little confusing for me because I found myself getting involved in loving so many different things that I didn't know how to really settle on one and incorporate it. it like, so I kind of, have like these different sections now, but I'm, I'm currently trying to work on kind of like melding them together. Yeah, and Christine, you mentioned sort of the explore, exploration or the um, exposure to a variety of media. How did yeah. that influence your art making? Yeah, I would agree that it was almost at times a little confusing um, because I was becoming so excited about other mediums you know I I, yeah. I had a whole year where all I was doing was collage and um Alexandra Sheldon who's a, a teacher of collage at Snow Farm um and other places but she just um she made it come alive for me I mean I'd done collage as a kid and you know I think everybody does in some way but it was so uh the way she embodies her art, the way she talks about it, it it made it made it come alive for me in a way that I was so excited. I was like, oh, maybe maybe this is my medium instead. And then I was also really allured by it because it's so much lighter and <laughs> easier to work with paper than it is with glass and stone and all these other things. Um, and I there were I did make some mosaics that have collage embedded in them. Um, and then ultimately, I think, oh, and I, I did some ceramic work where the ceramic pieces ended up in mosaics um, and then became friends with some ceramic artists who would, you know, eventually give me their shards to turn into mosaic bits. So I did come back to mosaics, but I, I think I had to explore a few other, you know, journeys along the way too. But I also, um, I, I'm really a big, um, I, I love hand tools and in most of my work, that's the majority of what I use, but I was able to really watch and learn the use of power tools um, in, in glass and metal 
um, that I had previously been kind of intimidated by um, and artists using these in, in a way that made, made it feel like, okay, I can learn that too. And I've really used those in my own, own work as well. So it's given me confidence. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's sort of that whole mentor, mentee aspect that we yeah. were talking about is that, it, you know, you're watching it happen in front of you. So you realize, um, yeah, I can do this too. Or like, I never thought to do it this way, or I never imagined myself working in mosaics. And now, you know, I'm, I'm doing these different things. Um, we have a few more minutes. Um, we definitely have some time. So I don't know, I want to give... Um, some folks watching the, the opportunity to enter their questions if they have any, but um, Christine, did you have any other questions you wanted to kind of wrap up the conversation with? No, I mean, I, I feel like we, we touched on all the things I had in my list. Um, I didn't want to leave out the adult programs at Snow Farm. I mean, we really focused on the high school program, but I think, you know, anybody that takes classes as an adult at Snow Farm would feel like a similar connection to the place um, that you can live you can live that part of your life at any at any age really yeah our camp for grown-ups definitely yeah. <laughs> um and what about what about actually what about being um in the setting because it's sort of you know out in the country, out in the mountains, and and presumably, I mean, Christine, you live out there, but like presumably, people are coming from different areas. And and did I, sooner you or Graham? Did you did you feel like coming to to this this um you know a new area or a new landscape kind of um, was a part of the experience for you as well? Very much so, because <laughs> like Snow Farm is almost like in the middle of nowhere, like you're surrounded by woods. It's just like magical like land that's like at night there's the stars are just like so bright because there's barely any pollution around that area you can see shooting stars and satellites it's a very inspirational place it's very beautiful mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely like the landscape the the woods like the creek i obviously spent a lot of time in the jewelry studio and like the woods behind the yeah the little creek uh i mean I, I love it i remember you used to bring your hammock back there and you used to take yeah. breaks on your hammock yeah exactly. like every year i went back to teach i would bring a hammock and like take little disco naps in the woods <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um yeah i mean i think the landscape is one of the massive pluses of snow farm definitely yeah and the really old buildings you know the farmhouse it's just uh -huh. so quaint yeah, the buildings, um, like the road up there, yeah. all the swimming spots. <laughs> yeah. I yep. mean, the whole, the whole package is amazing. Yeah, and then the cute, like, ice cream place in the, like, Williamsburg <laughs> town that... <laughs> yeah, the general store. Yeah, the general store that has the ice cream. Gotta have it. Gotta have ice cream. Um, okay, I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, if you guys have anything else to say or anything else, um, you, you gotta get out to each other. Any questions, thoughts before we wrap up? It's been an honor to have you. Yeah. It's been really great to be here. It's been really fun. It's been really fun listening to your conversation and, and, um, uh, so listening and learning from your conversation and, and feeling inspired um, as well, learning about all these um, amazing experiences in, in different media. Um, so Snow Farm, th thanks to Snow Farm uh, for bringing uh, these artists and more to Fuller Craft Museum for our makers and mentors um, exhibition. Snow, Snow Farm is located in Williamsburg, Mass. Uh, snowfarm.org if you wanna learn a little bit more about that check that out. And um, thank you for joining us from Fuller Craft Museum. Um, I want to send a special thank you to any of our members who are with us tonight, um, staff from Fuller Craft Museum, board members for joining us. Um, we are a community as well, so I'm really grateful to our community for being with us tonight. Um, and if you want to learn more about becoming a member, 
virtual programs, workshops, or more, please visit us at floorcraft.org. If you enjoyed tonight's program, please consider supporting us with your donation or membership. And again, thanks so much to our three panelists and all of the Snow Farm community um, for the artwork that we are so privileged to share at Fuller Craft Mu Museum. It's been a wonderful evening with you. Um, and uh, I hope that we will all meet very soon. <laughs> <laughs>